Hey guys, alright? Welcome everyone. Some priests can be seen approaching the Sola Mira hive. Once they manage to enter, Black Hat observes that something is amiss, but the priest is determined about orders to find the queen, so they proceed. They hear some noises ahead and ready their weapons when suddenly they realize it's a trap, as some people are pulled under the ground. Some of them are taken, and others escape towards daylight. Though when they reach the last tunnel, the priest fails to help Black Hat avoid capture. The world of the priests is a world that has always had vampires. A bloody war between humans and vampires has been waged for ages, destroying each other and the world itself. Facing extinction, humans retreated to walled cities under the church's protection. Then they created the ultimate weapon against vampires, the priests. They were powerful warriors, trained in the art of vampire combat, who single-handedly decimated the vampire threat. Vampires were no longer a problem, so the church decided to disband the organization of priests. Only a few of them remain, integrated into a society that no longer needed them, fading into obscurity along with the vampires. Many years later, Owen drills the ground to check radiation levels. He tells his wife Shannon that according to his findings, they can start planting. Lucy, the couple's daughter, arrives home and immediately makes a joking comment about dinner being radioactive soup again. Owen asks where she's been, and when she says she was in town, he gets upset because she disobeyed his word. She says she's old enough, but he says the rule doesn't apply where they live. Sacrifices need to be made there. Lucy gets upset because she feels like a prisoner in the outpost where they live. Shannon interrupts the argument and gets them to pray, effectively calming them down. Suddenly, the ground shakes, and Lucy gets scared. Owen looks outside and sees a group of vampires approaching the house. He tells the women to hide underneath. Shannon opens their hiding spot and puts Lucy inside, telling her not to scream, no matter what happens. She stays in the house to help Owen. Lucy hears gunshots and her parents screaming, being torn apart by the vampires. The hatch opens, and someone enters, terrorizing Lucy. The skyline of the cathedral city can be seen. It's still under the church's protection. Its inhabitants are constantly under the watchful eye of the dominant clergy. While the priest can be seen walking among the people, the church bells ring, and everyone stops to pay homage, with a disembodied voice saying that to oppose the church is to oppose God. The priest goes to a confessional and enters the automated booth. He pleads to be forgiven for his sins, and his voice is recognized by the machine. The automated Monsignor Orellas appears on the screen, and the priest immediately goes into his confession. He's been having dreams about the war with vampires and the time he couldn't save one of his men. The priest has begun to question and doubt his faith. The automated Monsignor responds that the devil has many forms and can be fought with personal sacrifice and work, and then gives him his prayers of contrition. Later, the priest is returning home and is in an elevator with a boy and his mother. The boy asks about his tattoo, but his mother says he shouldn't talk to priests. Just as he's about to enter his apartment, he knocks down a man who was following him. Hicks says he's the sheriff, and tells him about what happened to his brother Owen, saying he was injured, Lucy was taken by the vampires, and Shannon was killed. The man follows the priest inside and says Lucy spoke about him as a war hero, the best at killing vampires. He says he'll go after her and could use his help alongside him. The priest can't just accept. He goes to see the dominant clergy to ask for the reinstatement of his authority as a priest. Monsignor Orellas was informed by Monsignor Chamberlain of his troubles. The priest tells them that his family was attacked by vampires, to which Monsignor laughs, saying no vampire escaped the reserves. He thinks it was the work of desert bandits and that the sheriff was mistaken. Monsignor says there's no more vampire threat. Chamberlain tries to help the priest in his quest, but he refuses him and orders the priest not to shake the citizen's faith. The priest continues to question him and is reminded by Monsignor that questioning the clergy's authority is absolutely forbidden. If he disobeys them, he would be stripped of his order and excommunicated. Meanwhile, on a fast-moving train, Lucy is kept in a cage by the vampires. She's taunted by one of them until Black Hat arrives. He tells her she's in a cage for her own protection. She tells him her uncle, the priest, will come after her and him. What she doesn't know is that Black Hat is counting exactly on this fact. Monsignor Chamberlain tells the priest that the judgment is final, 
but he is disappointed because after all he sacrificed, they wouldn't listen to him. Chamberlain says the war was won a long time ago, and the priest disagrees. He tells the priest not to commit sacrilege just to hunt down a small band of scavengers. The priest says he needs to, and the police raid the bar they are in. Chamberlain tells him he needs to think of the greater good and not provoke something that could cause more harm. The priest is disappointed, even though Chamberlain wants to help him not make a mistake. He's ready to break his vow and takes down the police one by one in a matter of seconds. Later, he is seen preparing and loading his weapons to go after the girl. He uncovers his motorcycle and leaves the cathedral city. The priest leaves behind the last traces of the human world and enters the desolate and harsh landscape of the desert. With incredible speed, he reaches his brother's outpost. The priest enters the destroyed house and finds a photo of Owen's family. The sheriff thinks he's looting, but when he realizes it's the priest, he's glad to see him arrive. They go together to the city. As soon as they arrive, the sheriff kicks a vendor out of his town for trying to sell fake weapons against the vampires. The townspeople protest and say they need the weapons, but Hicks says there are no more vampires. Later, he and the priest talk while waiting for the doctor to allow them to see Owen. The priest goes in and sits beside him. Owen asks why he never came back, to which he replies that he couldn't anymore. When Owen regrets he couldn't save Shannon because he didn't have his gift, the priest consoles him, saying he gave her a life he couldn't, she never forgot him. Owen asks him to promise he'll find Lucy and kill all the vampires. Later, the sheriff tells the priest that the clergy is looking for him and they won't allow Lucy's rescue. He says he wants to join the priest's rescue team, but he tests him by refusing. Hicks grabs a bullet and cuts it in half in the air with a knife. The priest asks if he's good with a gun, and he says he's even better than with a knife. Before leaving the room, he asks the priest why he's loading the bullets, as they don't use weapons, and he replies that they're for him. Back in the cathedral city, a squad of priests has been summoned to the Monsignors. Their orders are to bring the priest, dead or alive. One of the priests, the priestess, doesn't like this order, however, they still depart. The priest attends his brother's funeral, who was buried next to Shannon. Hicks joins him at Owen's outpost and asks what he found. The priest found footprints that don't match either the vampires or their family members, who are people infected with the vampire gene. They will start the search in the direction they came from. The two drive to the nearest vampire reservation. The sheriff says they're a fallen tribe. They won't have much time, as the sun is setting. Once inside, they see there are no guards there, and the place is infested with illegal familiars. The sheriff explains that most of these people are voluntary familiars, wanting to be infected eventually. They approach a familiar, and he says the priest isn't welcome there because his lands are protected. The sheriff tells him what they're looking for, and the familiar says no one passed through his reservation. They open the main gate and enter, finding the place in a terrible state and the guards' bodies scattered on the ground. The priest enters a cell and interrogates a familiar, threatening to open his master's coffin if he doesn't tell him where Lucy is. Suddenly, a group of familiars appears, ready to fight. They attack the sheriff, who runs outside, only to be attacked by the other familiar. The priest arrives at the right moment and kills the familiars, except one. He interrogates him, but he defends the vampires and makes the priest look like the monster. The sun starts to set, and he says it's too late because the night is their time. Once the sun sets, the vampires emerge from their coffins and instantly surround the priest and the sheriff. The priest takes out a Bible and starts reading, but instantly pulls weapons from between the pages and uses them to kill two of the vampires. He fights with another, and leaping into combat kills another with his sacred blade. Meanwhile, Hicks tries to shoot at a monster, but when he's overpowered, the priest arrives and saves him. Suddenly, one of the vampires lets out a scream and flees. The priest returns to the familiar and asks him again. He says they took her to the west, but he doesn't even know what's coming. The vampire returns and attacks the priest. They fight and fall within the reservation's boundaries. Hicks waits with his weapon ready, but it's the priest who comes out alive. The two talk about what they should do, and the priest says the Sol Amira hive is to the west. Hicks thought all the hives were destroyed, but he says they should still check and maybe, if they find the missing vampires from the reservation, they'll also find Lucy. So, he gives Hicks some tips on how to kill vampires because they don't move like humans. If he wants to kill one, he needs to anticipate their moves. Meanwhile, the town vendor pays a visit to Black Hat to give him some information. He asks for some compensation, 
but Black Hat threatens to drink his blood, so he gives him the information anyway. The vendor tells him that the priest showed up in town after they took Lucy and that he was with the sheriff. Black Hat says he did well but still drinks his blood and turns him into a familiar. Simultaneously, the priest arrived at the outpost and is tracking the priest's trail. The sheriff and the priest continue heading west. While taking a break, the priest asks if his brother knew Hicks was with Lucy, to which he responds that he didn't. And to his question if he loved her, he answers yes. The priest tells him that if she's infected, he'll kill her. The sheriff says he won't allow him to do that. Finally, they arrive at the hive and climb its walls. Once inside, the priest has flashbacks of the time he was there during the war. He fires a flare into the hive's dark hole and tells the sheriff to shoot anything that approaches and isn't him, then the priest descends into the hole. Hicks finds a toy buried under the dirt and explores the hive level he's on. A creature appears behind him. Meanwhile, the priest investigates the hive tunnels, he sees someone running past him and follows them. When he sees a light at the end of a tunnel, he's attacked by the priestess. The priest asks her what she's doing there, and she says she was sent by the clergy. She and the others split up in the reservation. He tells her he had no choice but to break his vow. They hear gunshots in the distance. When they find Hicks, the priest tells him that the creature is a hive guardian, which is too big to come down there. The priests jump to fight it. The fierce creature nearly kills the priest, but his partner draws the monster's attention to leave him unguarded between the holes in the wall. The priests regroup and work together to get to the creature, using their strength, they leap onto the beast, and the priest delivers what seems to be the final blow. Suddenly, the creature wakes up, and Hicks shoots it dead. Later, the priests talk, while Hicks guards the entrance. The priestess asks why there would be a guardian in an abandoned hive. Then she tells him that the sheriff will try to stop him from killing Lucy if she's infected. The priest thinks he wouldn't be able to do that. They talk about what they did after the war and share their hardships. She tells him she won't take him, but she came there to warn him. She, like him, is suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder after the war. In the good times, however, she thinks of him. The three continue exploring the hive and come to a newly rebuilt section. They enter, only to find a huge hive, made for a new army. The only problem is that there's no one there. As they continue investigating, the priestess tells Hicks that the priest was taken much later by the clergy, and his sacrifice was greater than most of theirs. He approaches them, saying the air is changing, and they find a huge exit leading to the city of Jericho, where the other priests were headed. Simultaneously, the vampire train arrives at Jericho station, to the astonishment of the man working there. It stops right in front of him, but no one gets off. When he goes to check the door, a vampire kills him. Then Black Hat emerges, calling the others to start the hunt. A family is listening to music when a vampire invades their home and kills the father. The entire town is under attack from the vampire army, as Black Hat conducts it like an opera. Suddenly, the three priests who were trailing the priest arrive and confront him. He easily takes down the first one. Black Hat asks the remaining two if they want to join him. The next morning, the group arrives in the city to find it desolate. They split up to search the buildings. The priestess finds dynamite. And the priest enters an empty house. Hicks and the priestess meet up, and he tells her there's no one left. She says there were too many mouths to feed. They find the priest in the middle of the city, praying before the bodies of the other priests. She joins him on the ground. Hicks asks what kind of vampire could have killed three of them. The priest answers it's something they haven't seen before. They go to the train station, where Hicks tells them the rail goes to the cities, and Jericho is the last stop in the desert. The priestess and the priest realize it was all a systematic plan to lure the priests out of the cities, so the entire vampire army can take down the defenseless cities. She shows them the dynamite and devises a plan where she'll blow up the railway, and the two of them will get Lucy off the train. The priest sets off to refuel the motorcycles. Meanwhile, Black Hat offers food to a very tired and injured Lucy. He tells her that he wants what everyone wants, to live without the burden of sin. Lucy grabs a knife and hides it, then asks him what he is. He explains that he believes vampires are purer than humans and that he is the one who will purify the impure world. Black Hat adds that she and the priest will help him do this. Back in Jericho, Hicks asks the priestess how the priest can kill Lucy if she's infected when she's his own flesh and blood. She tells him that becoming a familiar means she belongs to no one else. Before leaving the city, they burn the bodies of the other three priests. 
The priestess tells the priest to remember that his power doesn't come from the church but from God. She loves him and says that a part of her hoped Shannon's death would finally set him free, then she leaves him with a special weapon. Then, they drive together towards the train and stop to watch it, when Hicks threatens to kill them if the priest doesn't promise not to kill Lucy if she transforms. And he says he doesn't think he cares about her. The priestess says that Lucy is his daughter, that she was just a baby when the clergy took the priest. He then gave her to Owen to raise, and that was his sacrifice. The priest tells him that if he kills him, he won't be able to save her alone, but they can only do it together. As they approach the train, the priest tells the priestess to blow up the rails, regardless of whether they're still on them. Hicks jumps on the train on the last carriage, then advances and enters the compartment. The priestess advances in front when several bikers come out of the train and go after her. But then she activates the nitro on her bike and escapes from them. Hicks enters a nest of vampires, and the priest climbs to the top of the train, where Black Hat awaits him. Black Hat explains to the perplexed priest that the vampire queen turned him into a human vampire and asks him to join him so they can return to the city as brothers. The priest asks about his daughter, and he says she's waiting for his decision. He attacks him, but Black Hat dodges his attack and says that he's now stronger than him, so he can't win. Meanwhile, the priestess prepares the explosives on the tracks and arms them while seeing the bikers approaching. She prepares to fight them and instantly engages in combat. She eliminates them one by one, with great skill, in an incredible display of power and precise techniques. Suddenly, she realizes that one of the familiars disarmed the detonator, and she devises a new plan. The priest and Black Hat are fighting on the train, almost equal in skill and strength. But the vampire always finds the advantage. He asks the priest to join him again, but he refuses and lunges his fist at him, with Black Hat dodging all his moves. He knocks the priest down and thinks he pushed him under the tracks, but he grabs onto the train. Simultaneously, Hicks is navigating through the train and escapes from an awakening vampire nest, then he finds Lucy being taken by a familiar. He wants to blow the door when the priest punches his way into the train. Suddenly, the vampires enter the train carriage. Hicks shoots them first and then punches holes in the roof for the sun to come in. They go after Lucy through the train, and when they finally reach her, Black Hat prevents them from getting to her by throwing Hicks off the train. Hicks finds a familiar's motorcycle. The priest is being beaten by Black Hat, but Lucy manages to break free from her captors and sets him on fire. Then she goes after the vampire, who tells her that the priest is her father. They fight again, and he pins the priest to the wall. Black Hat takes Lucy out of the train and leaves the priest to burn. At the same time, the priestess has set up the explosives on her bike and races toward the train. The priest wakes up and frees himself from the wall. Black Hat is ready to turn Lucy when he appears and attacks him. She falls, but he grabs her in time. They hang on the side of the train, and Black Hat prepares to push them when they see the priestess approaching. She jumps off the bike when it hits the train, and the priest jumps off her, holding Lucy, at the same time. The train is destroyed along with all the vampires inside it. Hicks sees the explosion and runs towards it. He arrives and finds the priest and Lucy alive. The girl jumps into his arms. The priestess walks towards them, and Black Hat's hat falls to the ground. Later, the priest enters a mass held by Monsignor Aurelis. He approaches him while belittling him for coming back. The priest throws the head of a vampire in front of his legs and tells him to check the burning train outside the city. He says that the vampire queen wasn't among them. Aurelis calls him a charlatan and threatens him. The priest says that the war with the vampires is just beginning as he leaves. We conclude with him meeting the priestess in the desert. And she informs him that she told the others they will meet at the rendezvous point in another city. He sets off into the sunset.